Sunny Bonani, welcome and good evening. Welcome back to Young Climber. It is another day to profile a successful business. I'm Lisuati, right here in the heart of the manufacturing town of Eswatini. It is Matapa, and we are talking to Sandile Mavuso, who talks to us about Sibongile beverages and how he is bringing kombucha and iced tea to the world. And with that said, introducing today's guest, Sandile Mavuso, joining us right here on Young Climber. Sandile, welcome to Young Climber. Thank you. Welcome to, welcome to you, the viewers, as well. Um, tell us, Kalenje, Ngawe, as Kulme Ngawe, your upbringing and how it has shaped you um, as a person to be where you are today. So, Kulme is a good thing that you can do. But, Kukula Gwako, begin for Lenjanji. So, I grew up at uh, Etambut. Mm. Uh, my parents were at the Etambut. But I grew up all over the country, to be fair. Mm -hmm. It was money in the middle of the country. I grew up everywhere. Okay. Yes. Okay, so you were hoping the country, basically. I was hoping the country. And Kukula Wako Benjan, and how did it contribute to the person that you are today? So Kukula Wami, I think, who contributed learning because my parents were independent-minded, mm -hmm. especially my, my mom and my father, too. They mm -hmm. encouraged me to mundo a person who was a person. Uh, they encourage a lot of independent thinking, a lot of experimentation. Uh, but usually, because that's when you imagine and be able to imagine things. Yeah. I think Gonga will go back for again. It what let me go to the Mm. And now let's talk about your time at St. Mark's High School. Of course. Um, how has it contributed to you know your thinking and your development as a person? Scottish language is cut up for St. Mark's. Ah, uh, no, St. Mark's played a huge role in Pilo mm. because St. Mark's, first of all, was a culture shock. Mm. Uh, good St. Mark's is more like a neatly income school. Okay. Uh, at that time, I'm not yes, yes. it was, and then I mean, I was school in Sasekas. I feel like it's more like a culture shock, seeing a lot of people living in our interaction about before. But most importantly, St. Mark's, lower than I in is the fact that I was able to join. Uh, their home economics department. Mm. That's it. Now, from the home economics from form one to form five. Really? I was the only guy. Yeah. Form five, the only man. Yeah. I was the only guy. 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 I the only guy. I was 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 the Mm. And after that time, you know, you took a gap here. We'll get into your mindset during that time. And, you know, judging from what you're saying, mm. I feel like you've always known that um, you wanted to be in the food and nutrition space yes. because um, you then pursued your, your, your BSc in environmental health mm. and food science. Um, what pursued you into going that direction? Is it something that you've always known? Yeah, it's something that I've always known. Um, this school, it was in like in for the Bengi planning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan then would see in Hambeno you end up from six, which are the A levels, so mm -hmm. that I can be able to attend universities in South Africa. Okay. But it really came to be, and then I had to take the whole gap year, which wasn't bad. It was born yeah. in 2010. Mm. 2010, it was a nice gap <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, but I eventually settled on going to environmental health and food science mm. at the University of Switzerland. Yes. Okay. And now we talk about, you know, your, your, your qualification, which is a BSc in environmental health and food science. Mm -hmm. And many of the viewers, or some of them, may not know what it is, um, but it is a, a path under STEM. Why did you pick um, specifically a path under STEM? Uh, my high school, high school and also at home. It mm. was very important at that time. I had a huge interest in myself, personally myself, and it was also groomed in high school. Yeah. And I always knew by that time, it would always be understand. And environmental health and food science was good for me because I wanted to take a real and that's in the versatile. So environmental health and food science is versatile because it combines public health and food science and mm. combines it into one. Yes. So that's the STEM level you found me. And then during your, your time um, studying, you were also a public health inspector in Pigspeak. <laughs> public health inspector, um, and what are some of the key lessons that you, you learned during your time in this role? 
Okay, so now we second year when the environmental and food science. When you're in your second year, you are mm -hmm. taken into a public health departments under the Ministry of Health, where you oh, are attached okay. as an uh, intern in the uh, environmental health department. So yeah. I went to Peak Peak to work there under the careful offense of Mr. Lamina, I won't forget it. So a public health inspector, what you have to do, you visit shops, you visit uh, my facilities, you visit everyone in the corner to check for my public health risk in the corner. Mm. You check for cool food safety, food quality, where the kinds of food is good, they reach a mass parlor or any other person you act that role. Mm. So we were taken through the bush in buying this, that I mean, this number from the Titolo, check for charities, check Titolo. Um, check a lot of the public markets to make sure that everybody complies and they produce the quality of food. Mm. And uh, you, you also took up on other positions. Um, one specifically was the inter internship that you did um, at Africa Chicks mm. in quality assurance. Can you also talk about your experience during that time and how it actually prepared you for some of you know, the future roles that you're now carrying? Um, when I was in third year, Mm -hmm. In that corner, so I visited Africa Chiefs. We went there as an intern for three months, yeah. uh, where I served under food quality, uh, under quality assurance. Yes. Now this is quite a contradiction because Africa Chiefs, it's uh, they deal with uh, my one day old chick and me camera food science. <laughs> yeah. But it was actually very important because they share something similar: food production and one day old chick, which is cleanliness, which is the food safety, which mm -hmm. is the quality and safety. So I learned how to take care of a factory, how to clean a factory from top to bottom, how to maintain the quality to ensure there is no form of contamination. So that was what I was learning there. So all of these things were shaping me towards the care that I have now. And then I think at some point you were finally um, in a laboratory <laughs> when you were at um, the United Plantations, uh, Swaziland. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that um, specific role and how did you feel like it was much closer um, to what you wanted to pursue in the future? Finally. Yes. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do beverages, yes. first and foremost. Mm. And uh, I, luckily for me, I interned there and then I started, I then became permanent. Yeah. So I started out as an intern in their quality assurance department, but then I was made permanent into their laboratory department where I was like the lab technician. Mm. Finally, be able to test all the beverages that they make there, all the juices that they make, including the oranges themselves. Mm. It was a wide, huge, huge, huge job that I didn't think of when I went there, but when I realized how important it was, so I, I started. Uh, they call it Ngonine State, also Ngonine yes. Tambuti. Yes. But to be fair, they already knew me there because my father yes. worked there like many, many years ago. So they were quite interested to see me work there, yes. And, you know, we get to talk about the start of Sibo, Spongile Beverages, mm -hmm. rather, um, which is abbreviated Sibo Bev. Okay. Um, when, after all of this experience, how did you then combine it and how long did it take after this is what I want to do, I want to stand on my own because okay. you had a permanent job, you could have chosen to you know, stick with it but then you, you decided to break away. Why did you make that decision? Uh, I think the decision has to do with me personally. Mm -hmm. As much as I enjoyed my job, at the same time, I didn't like the fact that I was confined to the fact that I had to run my ideas into someone else. Mm -hmm. I felt that huge need to be independent and have my own thing. So it was December 2018, I decided to make that decision. But you know what, uh, this coming here in 2019, I'm starting this business and I'm moving forward. And it's mm. been a long journey yeah. from then onwards. It's a long journey. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll definitely get into the details of the business, but uh, starting up, uh, where did you start, Nje? <laughs> no, I get drawing up a business plan, but mm -hmm. you know, to start something, you need funding, mm -hmm. um, you need people to actually approve your idea. Mm -hmm. um, how was it for you, the beginning point? So the most important thing in all of this, it's the Royal Science and Technology Park mm. here at Port Green. Okay. So in December 2018, just like I said, yeah. I was reading through the Observer page. I won't forget, it was December. And I noticed uh, a call for applications. They were making a call for applications for young entrepreneurs who had ideas in STEM, mm -hmm. in technology, in science, in all the branches to make their proposals to them. Okay. At that point, I was already making kombucha. And at first, I feel like in 2018, that was like a revolutionary idea. It wasn't as common as it was now. Mm. I remember showing up there with a basket of my uh, 
uh, my samples yeah. applying and then I was incubated at the Royal Science and Technology Park where they like honed the whole business idea out of me. Because like I said, mm -hmm. when I was a ranchy business before, I hadn't run a business plan. I just yeah. had the idea of making kombucha. They took it from there yeah. and then made me to the person that I am now. All right. Um, we'll get deeper into the details of the business and, you know, what you do now, what you provide, um, you know, and basically what it is and the person that you aim to be in the future because I don't think Kupele Lalana, um, but that will only be after the break. Okay. Welcome back. We are still chatting to Sandy Lemavuzo who talks to us about Sibo Bev and what he produces. Right about now, we need to get into the details um, of the beverages. But again, we'll backtrack a little because um, what inspired the name Swongile Beverages and um, we spoke earlier. Okay. I was like, of all the drinks that you could <laughs> choose to produce, mm. you went for kombucha, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's, it's popular now, it's but popular back then now, when you then. started, um, what sparked that idea and that specific beverage? Uh, that specific beverage, um, I liked the kombucha mm -hmm. when I first heard about it. When I first heard about it, I was still a young boy. Mm. Um, some Asian gentleman visited us oh. back in Baban okay. and he, was, he would make a kombucha okay. but we didn't know what it was. Uh, we used to call it uh, eating a copy pond. We, we would make like names for it. Yeah. What we knew is that it was a nice drink, it was enjoyable and we would drink it from him and then that man I never interacted with him ever. Mm. So I kept on thinking to myself what was that beverage that we used to enjoy when we were like 12, 13 years old back mm -hmm. in Baban. And then the idea came back to me, oh, okay, it must be something they call kombucha. So I started researching about it, thanks to my education, thanks to the work experience that I had. I started yeah. it, it, researching about it, trying to make it over a lot of trial and error. Mm. And I was able to come up with a product which I think I was confident about. And this was in 2018. Mm. So I, I, I came up with the project. And then you asked earlier about uh, the names, yeah, the beverages. Yeah. Um, Sibongile is the name of my mother. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Sibongile yeah. is the name of my mother. I think it was a personal request from her. Okay. Uh, it was a personal request from her. I remember back in uh, 2018, Yeah. Uh, I think I was contemplating by that time because mm -hmm. she passed away in 2018. Oh, yes. So in 2018, I kept on telling her that I want to start a business and then said, the only way I'm going to allow you to start a business if you name it after me. I'm, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm the one who told her that. I'm oh, going to start okay. a business and name it after you. Mm. And then she was saying, okay, what if I'm not here anymore? Will you still be? I said, like, I want to honor your name because yeah. you've done a lot of for, for me. Yeah. So it was, uh, in a mesh as in the beverages. What a beautiful story, you know. <laughs> um, now let's talk about the product itself because uh, you started somewhere definitely. Um, now I feel like it's safe to say this is mass production, mm -hmm. um, but what Gala now Sahambisa 12, Sahambisa 6, and now you are here where you take um, the in bulk, you know, mm -hmm. to consumers. Can you talk about the process from start to finish? Then and now. Then and now. Yes. Uh, back then, uh, yeah, it's a tough story. <laughs> yeah. Back Even then, the it was it was um, it was unbranded, mm. it was unpackaged, it was a mess, <laughs> but it was working. Yeah. So when we started out, I started out by purchasing like glass bottles. Yeah. Uh, I used to sell it to my neighbors back in Speak Speak. I would mm. make home, which I sell it to my neighbors. My neighbors would tell other neighbors. That's how I grew. Yeah. So I would make carry packs. So when I came with the carry pack at uh, Royal Science and Technology Park. Mm. First of all, they told me to research more, to yeah. research more on the product, to play trial and error, to draw, do a lot of things. So I started out by packaging in those small bottles, mm -hmm. and then I would sell it to relatives, and then it grew from there. Yeah. With a lot of support, a lot of people saying, you can do this, this is nice. Yeah. I became to gain more confidence, introduce more flavors. Mm. So if you reach our product, it's something called original, original flavor. Yeah. That was the only flavor that I came up with, and then as time went on, I'll add more flavors, I'll add more flavors up until now where we have four and we're going on seven. Mm. 
Yes. That's a really big story, mm -hmm. but you know, we will get to talk mm -hmm. about that. Nyarong Funas Kulmise, we were talking about the branding of mm -hmm. things, the packaging has gotten better. Mm -hmm. How is it now? Um, we talked about the dead, okay. but now, Segunjani, um, from the factory to the consumer, can you tell us about that process? Or oh, from, the, from the factory to the consumer? Yes, so from like making the product to <laughs> the consumer. So now it has a better package, obviously. Yeah. We package it and we package it in 500 mils, we also do 1.5 liter meals mm -hmm. and then we package it from the from customers all the way to the consumer. Mm -hmm. We do it under two brands. Uh, we do it under something called Golden Horn, also do something under Explorers. Mm -hmm. So it's seven products. We take it to the shops where uh, consumers can now take it from the shop to consume. Okay. Yeah. And then you know that you only produce the kombucha but um, there are other products that you also need to make it work together for good, like the packaging. Okay. Um, how have some of the other businesses in Eswatini contributed to the success um, of your business mainly? Because you also need other things. You need boma flavoring, whatever you put into that. Yes, yes. Um, can you talk about how everything else is working together to give you the final product? So it wouldn't be possible so yeah. I mean, without the help of other Swazi business yeah. people. You have to create that environment, you have to create that ecosystem now. But the biggest game changer obviously was the opening of, of a Swazi factory here yeah. in Matsapa called Powerpack. Yeah. So Powerpack, they make all the packaging that, that for us, which was hard to find before. And also we take our sugar, obviously it is manufactured in the country. Yes. With the teas, the iced teas, I work with small farmers uh, up there in, in Northern Ho to collect uh, the lemongrass tea, to collect the hibiscus tea, and then we collect all these teas from local farmers. The ones that we do not have, like mm -hmm. rooibos, because rooibos, like, you only have to grow it in South Africa, we take yeah. it there. Mm -hmm. But overall, we can proudly say that 90, 95% of everything that's in the bottle, it's including the bottle and the labeling itself, is probably from a Swatini. Yes. Mm, I love <laughs> to hear that. And I'm sure um, so many young people will be inspired by that. But I guess, as we when you did um, your BSc in environmental health and food science, how has that contributed uh, to the business overall? And how do you maintain um, high quality uh, and safety? And more, more, most especially, how do you apply um, all that education into the products that you make? I think education is 90% of everything that I do, mm. from the idea itself, yeah. from the product development itself. Mm -hmm. When you study BSc in environmental health and food science, you are going to study on how to do tasting, how yeah. to manipulate a person's taste, how to develop a product that mm. it tastes like this, yeah. how to uh, make a product, uh, give it an extra kick. Mm, okay. uh, so I use my education in come up with the products into developing the product, but most important, Mm. In the manufacturing, in the yes. manufacturing, it's very important that you manufacture a high quality product that is safe to consume. Mm. And that is what basically uh, environmental and food science is about. Mm. It's about maintaining like high quality food safety and food quality yeah. in, in your production capacity. So that's where my education goes in there the mm. most. Okay, mm. and you were lucky enough to trade at one of Africa's biggest festivals, you know. So, no, say, could miss at kombucha because I asked you earlier mm. on, Guti. Does the market really understand this product? Um, how was it received by the diverse crowd, you know, that attends the MTN Bushfire Festival? Okay. So, um, basically, now in the when you are a food processor in the country, because you don't get to interact with your final customer as they buy. Mm -hmm. You don't get to see the question they ask themselves when they buy. You don't yeah. get to see the appeal. A certain international trade fair is very important to us because it gives us that first head experience to mm. interact with the customer. Of course. Uh, you get to answer the question, what goes into their mind when yeah. they see the product? Mm. And you get to see who are your target customers. Mm. Because a lot of people can drink kombucha, but who is most attracted by kombucha the most? And then you're able to cater to that customer specifically. Mm. So a trade fair is sitting on the yes. A lot of people, they come, we get to see. Yeah. What are the questions they put It helps in developing the product, it helps in marketing the product because a trade fair. Yes. trade fair is out there. Customer called out and then a store. And then Nelson store, you should be able to speak to the customer. The product speak here, 
you can only get that first hand information by attending to the about trade fair. Mm. And I like that, you know, you speak about the trade fair because um, the theme that they had this year was accelerating business growth through digital transformation. Okay. And for this business specifically, how are you planning on applying that specific theme? Yin my technologies um, that you are planning to introduce to make it even better. So we plan on introducing a lot of technology to make the product uniform. Mm. Because that's yeah. what technology does. Technology yes. does not create the product for you. What it does, it makes sure with everything you create, it's uniform. Mm. That's the beauty of technology, of handcrafting. Yeah. And we plan on introducing that the more we go mainstream. Because you know what sister can ask the mainstream, the demand, already the demand is growing post a trade fair. Mm. You can see it. So if the demand is very important that we incorporate technology in how we do so that we can accelerate mm. and also make uniformity in the economy. And you know, just before we wrap up, if you could just um, give advice to our young people. This is a very Hey, it's a it's a very difficult um, mm. industry to tap into because mm -hmm. it seems far away. But here you are standing right bes um, before me. You made it. Mm -hmm. You did it. You were the first to do it. Mm. Um, can you please just give advice to our young people, Guti? Nanga bafunak ba entrepreneurs, the aspiring entrepreneurs. What can they do? Where should they start? Okay, so I have a lot of advice. Five points, I don't mm -hmm. know if you have five points. First of all, you need to develop a product. Yeah. You don't go there with some funa kunge na go manufacturing and what you manufacture in. You banale idea with some funa manufacture in and be able to experiment with your own. Start with what you have. I know would say a lot of people, but kaba would say it's just a motivational talk. Na sisi start with what you have, but it's it's mm -hmm. actually true. You start with what you have. And then most importantly, get educated. You don't have to go to university per se, mm. but you can get educated by learning as much as you can about your product. Internet is, is readily available, everything it is there. Mm. But as a woman and again, you so when I own a product, if you buy entrepreneur, mm. the fastest way of going, you could see a cool We operate a lot in silos and cover and go sit our corner. It doesn't work like that. You join a business support organization, but you are a business support organization where you affiliate now. Mm -hmm. These are the guys that receive the opportunities, they receive the news, they share it with you guys, they receive the platforms. They also do a lot of training. I didn't know about accounting without a PSO, I didn't know yeah. about taxation. Without the PSO, you can use them for the. So, when you go to the PSO, once you are for the sole name of the product, you go to the PSO. The corner, let that go incorporate, let that go incubate, let that go figure out, make sure you have them, use, use, figure out, make sure. And then, second, learn about the industry, the opportunities in the industry. Learn what to do and what to do. Where are the opportunities? Who are the key players? Who are the labour corner corner? You yeah. need to learn all those people. And then, five. Learn about the legal implications. Yeah, the product yeah. For younger industry corner is regulated. Come to our local iPhones and because you are going to go through all those three award lot two. Yeah. Now you have a product, a business support organization, EQ to pay team. You don't know where to sell the product. Mm. You don't even know if your product kumelenga yatsa nusa yeso no. Yeah. All those five things come to. Start with what you have. Learn as much as you can. Affiliate yourself. Learn about where to sell, and then learn the legal implications, and then you are there. Mm. But you grow. It's not that I can overnight success, but yeah. eventually, you know, definitely. Yeah. And I like that you've spoken about, you know, food science um, mm. so proudly. But I can't believe in my profession here in the Kingdom of Eswatini. And now with that you have seen, um, what are some other fields that you think? Um, what are some other fields that you think that young Emaswati can tap into where you see um, the gaps in the industry, especially? Um, it's a lot. Mm. First of all, access is so good that I have to sell to the final customers. Yes. There is a huge gap local for people who are going to provide services to other businesses. We are cinema limitations, the money in the cool, mm. in terms of machinery, in terms of technology, in terms of even IT. Yeah. We are not reaching our full potential quite seen as well as my business because people made a start and a pant and did to really and will connect again. That's what a lot of young people in Funabang and Egyomi go into that industry, start a business, could say, I'm seeing a business one, two, three, four, five, six in a limitations. If I can start this company, provide a service, can I better improve? 
That's where the opportunities are at the same time. Apart from manufacturing, but failing that was good manufacturing. Yeah. That's where my opportunities are corner because there's huge drive mm -hmm. of buy swazi, consume swazi, consume local, consume African. Yes. Not just consume swazi, consume African. There's this huge drive in the corner and a lot of markets have like after Saku, a lot of these company markets like corner where you can sell not just locally but to the rest of the continent mm. where it's an untapped market unlike literally everywhere in the world. So the opportunities are there. Yeah. But most importantly, you also, apart from manufacturing, you can target being a service provider, applying STEM yeah. to be a service provider to other businesses. Mm. Mm. All righty. Thank you so much, Sandine, for joining us here on Young Climber. You know, we could go on and on mm -hmm. um, with all the knowledge that you've been sharing, yeah. but we do hope that uh, Spongile Beverages will expand and we hope to see, you know, other products um, besides the kom kombucha and mm. the iced tea in every fridge, you said, <laughs> and in every store. Yes, yes. Um, big thank you to you for joining yeah. us. Thank once you. Thank again. you for having me. Thank you as well. All right, Mugule Makaya, that was it for today's Young Climber. We have to sign out, love, and leave you. But you know, we will be back next week, Tuesday at 6.30 with another amazing, successful person right here in the kingdom of Eswatini continuing to inspire you. Good night.